Kendall, thanks, Jemma Ramsey. It's good to see you again. We were just reminiscing about uh, when I first uh, met Jemma Ramsey. I was a captain, and he was a major. So it's great to see see you uh, continuing to serve in such a high capacity, and uh, it's wonderful to be working with you. So um, I've got two questions. Uh, one is related to um, the development of uh, follow-on aircraft. Um, you know, as you may know, I flew the A-10 Warthog, and there's been a lot of discussion about the future of the A-10. But under the assumption that uh, the A-10 sticks around for a little while longer. And if we could agree, maybe you won't agree with me, that the Joint Strike Fighter does not provide capabilities. And we decided we wanted to develop an AX of some port, like today. We decided we're going to develop an AX today. It needs to be a light attack aircraft to be able to do the things uh, to protect our men and women on, in harm's way. What are we talking about timeline-wise? I mean, just to, I want to just be able to frame the discussion. And I know it's hard because you don't know what the requirements are, but are we talking like 15 years, you know, to develop something where we haven't even identified it? And what, what could we do to speed that process up? And then the second question is related to, you mentioned the constraints of, um, uh, sequestration, but also when we are spending money uh, based on the end of the fiscal year, use it or lose it, uh, even though we've had deep cuts and I've seen them and I've seen them in the military, that's also a very inefficient way to do business. And even last year, I know friends still in uniform and I know friends who are contractors now, they were still on a spending spree of sorts in the last week in September to, you know, with, with the money. So what can we do to address that? Because, I mean, we're under very difficult uh, financial uh, you know, resource limitations right now, but we're still on a spending spree at the end of the fiscal year. So what can we do to help fix that uh, culture and that dynamic? Um, I'm going to let Admiral, uh, General Ramsey rather uh, address the next uh, light attack aircraft that we're going to buy. Which I don't think we have one of those in the budget at the moment. But um, the, uh, the issue of use or lose it, it's a real issue. And, I, and it was what I was getting at earlier about not putting our people in a position where time is working against them and they have to spend money or they feel pressure to spend money. Uh, we've looked at that, and it tends to happen in the O&M side of the house where money expires every year, and it also tends to happen where people are buying things like office products and so on, uh, where people will stock up at the end of the year. Uh, and I don't know, uh, I don't have good data on the magnitude of that abuse. Or I, I consider it an abuse if we're buying things we don't need. Just yeah, there's also money. service contracts and, I, and I, things. I tell a story about when I was a lieutenant in the Army, we'd fire ammo off at the end of the year because so we get the same amount of ammo next year. I've had fighter pilots talk to me about going out and burning holes in the sky just to use up gas because they wouldn't get the you know the O and M money for training next year, even though it wasn't a useful use of the resource. I think that is a problem. And uh, the Defense Business Board talked about how the Defense Department tends to be a, a culture of spending as opposed to a cost culture of cost control. That's one of the fundamental things we've been trying to get after in the whole set of better buying power initiatives. By f we, we try to force our managers to, to address cost control as a fundamental mission and to track their cost, understand their costs, and try to beat them down and to free up resources for things we really need. So if we, if we do have end of year money and we can repurpose it, it needs to go to things we really need and not just be spent because it's there to be spent. And I'll let you address the, uh, the next generation. Congresswoman McSally, boy, that, that sounds good. We, would you go back to a, a press conference we talked about in 1993, but it's great to see you again, and congratulations. The, uh, obviously, the A-10 subject has been discussed a lot uh, with Congress, but also in the building. And I'm not going to repeat all the things that, that my Air Force has said, but I'll just say yeah, it. Yeah, I just I don't even want to get into that. Yeah. It's just more if we're going to develop we're something it. else, what does um, that look like? Let me, let me kind of tie it into the aerospace innovation initiative that Mr. Kendall hit on earlier. Um, we're looking at this. You know, one, one of the things that JSIDS does is we're not looking at specific mission areas. We're looking at domains and how, to, how, do we gonna, how are we going to fight the future fight. So part of the A-10 issue, besides the fact that it's an aging aircraft, is what is right for the, the high-end fight of the future. So as you well know, we're looking at this from a multitude of angles. The permissive environment, the, the huge dearth of weapon system that this community has supported us buying over the last 10 years that allow us to do some pretty remarkable things and maintaining the technological edge to do that. The short answer to your question is, if we started today, and I'll, I'll really will defer to Mr. Kenner on the time, we're probably talking about 15 years for a full developmental program. There are some low-end things out there that other nations are buying we could do much faster, but we don't think that's the right thing for us for the high-end fight of the future. Yeah, thanks. That's really what I was getting at. It, I didn't want to get into the politics of it all, but start to finish if we decided. Um, and thanks so much uh, for 15 years is a good, that's what I figured it would be, but I wanted to make sure that that was my understanding. So part of the dialogue we have for the future if capabilities. If we built a low-end uh, light attack 
We could do that very quickly. There are off-the-shelf possibilities okay. for that. I mean, Textron's done a system on their own money, which could possibly fulfill that need. We've done a propeller-driven light attack we're giving to the Afghanistans, and there are planes around the world we could look at modifying and using. Uh, if that were the only purpose for the aircraft, we could do it pretty quickly, I think. The problem is if we want something that's going to give us air dominance for, you know, another generation, right. that's a very, very different program. That is a 10-year program. Great. Thanks. And my time's expired. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Scott? 